All right, we're fine. We're fine. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Mass Effect 2. Now, I know you guys right now are probably like, what's, what, like, probably right now you guys are like, what the fuck's going on? What's Fallen doing? What is she playing? Where's my furry visual novel videos? And, well, I think I've mentioned this before, but in all honesty, I'm a little tired of visual novels. And I figure, <clears throat> and the thing is, I want you guys to see the real me. And now the real me is a gamer. That's that's a given. That's a given. Uh, furry visual novel is debatable whether you can, you know, whether they can be considered video games or just interactive stories. That's that's debatable, and I accept that. But I'm talking about gay, real games. I, I, I'm talking about game games. I'm talking about I am a huge Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy series fan. Um, I've played pretty much all of the mainline games, even even the bad ones, even the bad ones. Um, we're talking about Dragon Age. I, I love the Dragon Age series, uh, I, and I'm and I'm a huge JRPG fan in general. A huge RPG and RPG fan in general. I've even played some shooters: Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption Two, uh, the Fallout series, and then and then for me, at the top, top video game series for me, is Mass Effect. Now there's no there's no there's no debating this for me. There's no. Oh, well, Fallen, are you sure that that's what you, you know? Are you sure that's your favorite video game series? Yes, period. Mass Effect is my favorite video game series. Not just sci-fi, not just third-person shooter. My favorite video game series of all time. I love Mass Effect. I love the characters. I love the crew ma mates you get. I love how you can adjust your main character. And I love the world. I love the universe. I, I think it's fantastic. I think it's wonderful. Now... Obviously, do I think there are issues uh, in certain games? Yes, absolutely. I, I think there are plenty of issues in the games. But in general, as, as you can tell, I, I love Mass Effect. I, I love it so much. It's such a good series. If you haven't played it, I'd highly, highly recommend you play it. I would give the first game a try. I know many people do not like the first game, especially now. And that's fine. I would at least try to give the first game a try, though. If you don't like the first game, that's fine. Jump to the second game. But don't play past the second game, because if you play the third game, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff, and you're not going to understand stuff. Even with the first one, you're going to miss out on stuff, and you're not going to understand. But anyway, the biggest question also you guys probably have is, why am I starting with two? Now, the reason I am starting with two, I'm going to say it to you guys right now. The reason I am starting with two is because... Playing one now, there are a lot of, you can see there are a lot of issues with the game. Not only are there a lot of issues with the game, there are a lot of issues with the way quests are implemented into the game. Especially side quests and exploration. They are terrible. They're not good. I, I'm, I'm willing to admit that they are not good. They are terrible. Despite that, I think the game is still good. I just think there are a lot of issues with side content in the game as well as the exploration aspect of it. So I figured I'm going to start with two. Because for these games, I want to get through as many side quests as I possibly can. So, for your benefit, I'm starting with two, which is considered the best of the trilogy. And I agree. I think two is the best of the trilogy, of Mass Effect trilogy, easily. I think it's the best one. So, I'm going to start with two. Get you guys into it. I'm not going to be playing one. In terms of one, I've already beaten it, so no need to worry. I'm not playing this blind. I've beaten this series so many times, so many, so, so, so many times. And I just recently beat this, so I'm going to be playing... This is my first time playing on PC, though. So I'm going to be playing this Mass Effect 2, uh, importing a save from Mass Effect 1 where I finished everything. I did all the side quests, I got my characters up uh, nearly max level. Max level for one is 60. I got to level 55, so close enough. So I'm going to be playing two with imported save and there is a little comic interactive comic uh that i will be going through to help you guys get better situated into this game but hopefully i'm really hoping you guys enjoy this i think it's a fantastic game for for both old and new fans of the mass effect series i'm gonna just ask you 
to sit back in the pi- sit back while I pilot the Normandy and you'd go back and you go and explore the wonders of the Milky Way galaxy. So obviously, like I just said, new game, a male and female. We are just going to import my Mass Effect One. Uh, her name is Melissa Shepard. She was level 50, and she's a level fifty-five soldier. And we're gonna start. All right. So for this game, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty I, I've played a lot of Mass Effect. I'm not gonna go normal because I'm so used to playing Mass Effect. We're gonna go veteran. This is what I beat the first game on, replaying it in this collection, the Legendary Edition. So I'm playing Veteran, uh, Auto Level Up, definitely that's a no, Subtitles on, a Squad Power Usage, Squad Mates can be a little dumb, even in two, so I'm gonna leave that off, so, as you can read, when enabled, Squad Members automatically use their most effective powers in combat, when disabled, Squad Members only use defensive and ammo powers automatically, so the only thing that my Squad Mates will do is they will use their defensive powers and anything that affects that, what kind of ammo they use, and besides that, they don't use their, um, they don't use their, um, offensive abilities. I have to manually activate them. And autosave, yeah, we can leave autosave, that's fine. Alright, so to give a quick summary of Melissa Shepard. Uh, Melissa Shepard, level 55, uh, she was a soldier. Uh, well, she is a soldier. She's a soldier. Her psychological profile, um, I played her mostly as a paragon. Um, I had a few renegade. Uh, renegade and paragon weren't, were pretty somewhat close together. Um, Rex lived. Um, in this playthrough, Rex always lives for me. I never let him die because even 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 in my uh, my silly playthroughs, I I just can't let him die. I love Rex. Uh, missing in action. This time, usually I let Ashley die. I don't like Ashley. This time I let Kanan die to be a little bit different. Uh, council history. I saved the council during the attack on the Citadel. Uh, and I this time I usually recommend Anderson. I recommended Ambassador Dina. And for you guys that know Ambassador Dina. You know that this should be very interesting. <sighs> I will give a very quick warning. There are black bars. That is the in-game cutscenes. I cannot control that. The Shepherd the gameplay does right. not have that. More than we could have hoped for. Commander Shepard uncovered the truth. And still, it's not enough. We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. But they're sending her to fight Geth. Geth. We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers are still out there. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help, even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard, they'll follow her. She's a hero, a bloody icon. But she's just one woman. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose her. One month after the devastating Geth attack on the Citadel, the Galactic Community struggles to rebuild the Alliance fleet made a tremendous sacrifice to save the Citadel Council and earn humanity membership into their prestigious group. Now the Council is forced to respond to evidence that the Reapers, enormous machines that eradicate all organic civilization every 50,000 years, have returned. To call the rumors- oh my gosh, I couldn't even read that! Well, you guys could pause the video and read that. I couldn't even keep up. Engaging FTL drives. Emission sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector, and we haven't found any sign of Geth activity. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The terminus system is crawling with them. Picking up something on the long range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm. Looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. Cruiser is changing course. Now on intercept trajectory. Can't be. 
Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly... It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers! Oh, no, Presley! Presley. Oh! Multiple hull breaches! Weapons offline! Somebody get that fire out! Way to start a game. Holy crap. All right, Normandy's under attack. We might be in a little bit of trouble. That's not good. It's not good at all. Shepard! Distress beacon is ready for launch. Will the Alliance get here in time? I'm not doing this just so they can find our frozen corpses. Get everyone onto the escape shuttles. Joker's still in the cockpit. He won't abandon ship. I'm not leaving either. Get to the damn shuttles! I'll haul Joker's crippled ass out of here. Commander. Get the hell out of here! For some mayday, reason, mayday. This is oh, hold on. So anyway, I was telling you guys earlier in the cut. Joker. Baby, hold together. Hold together. Oh wait. Oh my God, this one. Oh. Oh shit. So anyway, guys, as I was saying, in for the in-game cutscenes and the uh, F. The, the FMVs, I guess you would consider it, CGI, CGI, whatever words you want to use for them. Those, for some reason, are in widescreen format. I can't control that. That's just the way the game is. And then for the normal in, for the normal game, engine gameplay, that's just normal full screen. So I can't control that. So just a heads on, up before Joker. you guys start freaking out. get out of here. No, I won't abandon the Normandy. I can still save her. The Normandy's lost. Going down with the ship won't change that. Yeah, okay. Help me up. They're coming around for another attack! Oh, jeez. Fine, we're fine. We're gonna get out of here. We're still alive. We're fine. We're gonna we're gonna make it out of here. We're fine. Oh, we're fine. Oh, and we can't breathe. Oh no. Oh, we're gonna suffocate. Oh, that's not good. Well.
what a way to start a game. And I still consider Mass Effect 2's opening to be one of the best video game openings of all time. One of. Mind you, one of. Not the best. Uh, the best one, um, there's too many. But definitely, I think Mass Effect 2, I still remember to this day when I first played it, like, how intense it was. Like, I had played through the whole series. And I remember playing this one. I was like, oh, my gosh. Commander Shepard's dead. Is it going to be a new character? Well, and you guys who don't know this series are probably asking the same thing. And you have to watch the video to find out. Or... So, I guess, for people who don't know about Mass Effect, who've never played the series, I'm going through the interactive backstory. This gives the important details Just about the first game. routine mission. Why do they always say that before a mission? Of course it's routine. You haven't done anything yet. It's everything that happens along the way. The choices you make. The paths you choose. That turn the routine into anything but. Of course, that's how it started. A routine mission. Answering a distress call. And look where that got me. We were testing out the Normandy, Captain Anderson's new ship, when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. And whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Alenko. A good kid, loyal, by the book, with a talent for biotics. We came across the lone survivor of the patrol, Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. A soldier to the core, tough, disciplined, ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. A ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive. Scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted away. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact. A beacon left by a long dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Lieutenant Alenko made the mistake of getting too close. I hit him with some type of energy. I grabbed him and threw him out of the way. That's when it hit me. Hard. Every muscle in my body went rigid. I couldn't move. I could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. A vision. A dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Udina, our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat. As was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian Spectre named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime, and there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Udina's pointed accusations weren't enough to convince the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite specters could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof, which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another Turian, wanted to help. A top agent for Citadel security, Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest-looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led us to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Saren. The fugitive turned out to be an energetic little quarian named Tally. A tech expert with a knack for hacking, she procured some information on Saren. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime, and the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. But it went much further. Saren was trying to find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, and disappearing back through the mass relays to dark space, leaving no trace that they'd ever been. That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and it made some sense out of my visions. 
but not much else. We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat. But they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind, giving up his ship, the Normandy. He told me I'd need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. Liara. A Prothean expert, adept in biotics, and maybe most importantly, daughter of Benezia, Saren's top lieutenant. And like most Asari, as beautiful as she is intelligent, and born with a unique ability to meld with other species, Liara was able to help me decipher some of the vision the Beacon had given me. Nothing concrete, but it gave me some clues. And a new appreciation for the Asari. Her technique for accessing my vision was unexpected, but not at all unpleasant. Caden was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara. As commander, I knew either relationship had the potential to interfere with the mission. I decided discretion was the better part of valor, and kept my focus on our goal, finding Saren. Thanks to Liara's help, we had our next lead, Benezia. Saren had taken her to Novaria, where he'd enslaved the queen of a dangerous race of insect-like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Benezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni queen. The queen's drones were everywhere, and they were not happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Benezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone, with the information. I tried to reason with Benezia, but Saren had indoctrinated her. He had somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Benezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't doom an entire species for past sins. And the queen was true to her word. She left and took her army of drones with her. With Saren's top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer, But we soon learned it was more than a base of operations. It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the Genophage, a disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves. Mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base and all its research. Rex disagreed. Violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy it, that these Krogan weren't real. But he wouldn't back down. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. He realized this wasn't the way to help his people, and that Saren was the real threat. When we finally got to the center of the base, I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship, was a Reaper. It spoke to me, threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead. It wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. I split my team into two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign, the Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control. Said he'd found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence. But he was kidding himself. Or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, he ran. Leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried. But I wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. Caden was a good man, and a great soldier. But I had to choose. And I chose Ash. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, 
The next time we met, one of us would die. With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Protheans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship, against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. I'd never tell anyone, but I had my doubts. Leaving Caden behind had hardened my resolve. It revealed a weakness in my defenses. How many more friends and allies would I be willing to sacrifice in order to stop Saren? We arrived on Ilos close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago, and every 50,000 years before that, each time purging the galaxy of life. The Protheans had fought and died like every species before them, but a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space, slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space, bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. We followed him to the Citadel. It was intact, but heavily damaged. He had caught the Council fleets by surprise, and they were only now regrouping. And with Sovereign as his flagship, there was little hope that the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. But Saren was done running, and I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Council fleets battled Saren's army outside the Citadel, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, fell under attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have to put our Human Alliance fleet in jeopardy. The Council had to be saved. They represented the hearts and minds of the galactic community. Without them, the fleets would be in disarray. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet. The battle against Sovereign, a single Reaper, was relentless. It took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races, but in the end, Sovereign fell. But the costs were immense. While humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the Council, it was a hollow victory. The Reapers were still out there. I knew the fight was far from over, but as the one who'd led the fight against Saren, I was given new responsibilities. The choice of humanity's first counselor was left to me to decide. On the one hand, Udina, the lifetime politician, ruthless and ambitious, he would easily navigate the political landmines that would soon be placed before him. The other choice, Captain Anderson, the career soldier, tough but fair but a friend, and someone I could trust. Both great leaders in their own right. I didn't much like Udina, but sometimes you need a pit bull on your side. Someone willing to be the bad guy, for the sake of the greater good. The war was over, the threat had passed. In time, the council would rebuild itself. The Citadel could be repaired. Even the pain of lost friends would fade. But none of that mattered if the Reapers were still out there. And if they were all as powerful as Sovereign, we had to find a way to stop them. I had to find a way. I gathered my crew, took my ship, and went in search of answers. Officially, the Council would only say I was assigned cleanup duty. Routing out any remnants of Saren's army. Just another routine mission. Whew. I am sorry guys that that took so long, but I basically that little comic explained everything that you need to know if you don't know anything about Mass Effect, and not only that, it also explains the choices I made. So. The Lazarus Project will proceed as planned. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that happened.
we're back. Alright, so... For the sake of this being a coherent uh, experience of the trilogy, I'm playing... I'm playing with the exact same look that I had for... I'm playing... Oh, I'm sorry, I can't speak. I'm playing with the exact same appearance I had in the last game. This is my Shepherd. I decided to go female because, obviously... Um, in all fairness, I've, I've, I've played through the entire trilogy three times. The, this is the fourth time. The first two times I played male, the third time I played female. This time I'm playing female again. Um, but yeah, get a good look. This is my female shepherd. This is who we're going to be... This is who you... Me and all of you are going to be uh, experiencing for the next... Uh, who knows how many videos. It's going to probably be a long series, to be honest. Now, the difference is... I usually play soldier. I'm not playing soldier this time. I want something a little different. <gasps> Excuse me. So, pretty much to give you a very brief summary of what each class does. Soldier is if you want to use every gun in the game and focus on pretty much hitting hard with weapons. Infiltrators, if you want to use a lot of tech stuff, you have cloaking, which makes you invisible for a short amount of time, and it's really good against like the machine machines of this game. Uh, you got Vanguard, which is your biotics. Uh, to summarize it, to summarize it in the loosest terms I can, uh, think of uh, think of Vanguards in this game as Jedi who focus, who mostly focus on using Force powers exclusively. That's what they are. Uh, then you have Sentinels. Uh, Sentinels are Sentinels are a mix of tech and biotic abilities. Uh, not the uh, the best of both. Well, not the best. Um, well, yeah, the best of both worlds, but they're not they're not excellent at either role. You have adapts then which uh, adapts are adapts are soldiers slash biotics um, do a decent amount of damage biotics they can use like the basic the basic biotic abilities uh, throw and pull and that's about it uh, and shockwave. And then lastly we got engineers. Now engineers are soldiers or soldiers with a little bit of tech abilities that's what i'm gonna be going for we're gonna be doing a soldier with uh, some tech abilities and that's it my origin spacer uh we got a reputation for being pretty ruthless and we're gonna be engineers this time and that's it. there on the monitor something's wrong she's reacting to outside stimuli showing an awareness of her surroundings oh my god miranda i think she's waking up Damn it, Watson. She's not ready yet. Give her the sedative. Shepard, don't try to move. Just lie still. Try to stay calm. Heart rate's still climbing. Brain activity is off the charts. Stats pushing into the red zone. It's not working. Another dose. Now. Heart rate dropping. Stats falling back into normal range. <laughs> it's too close. We almost lost her. I told you your estimates were off. Run the numbers again. Oh, looks like we uh, came alive. Shepard, do you hear me? Get out of that bed now. This facility is under attack. Shepard, your scars aren't healed, but I need you to get moving. This facility is under attack. doesn't have a thermal clip. And keep your head down, Shepard. Shield yourself from the blast. Someone's hacking security trying to kill you. Look for a thermal clip for your pistol. T -t open sesame! Door, I need you to open. But, uh, yeah, um, I don't know what it is about Shepard, but Shepard just wakes up in the craziest scene. So, apparently, so, apparently, you know, we, we just died. Um, we don't know, how, uh, we literally died and we're brought back to life, which is a scary thought to think about, even in a sci-fi world. Um, I mean, that's pretty freaking scary. Like, can you imagine if you just, like, you die and you just wake up and 
But we have no idea how long it's been. I mean, it could be a year, two years, five years, ten years. Oh, hold on. Overload. I didn't see you there. Coast is clear. Jeez. Not having a lot of fun. Oh! 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 I'm hiding. Oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness. Guys, I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, uh, I, I couldn't get through the door. I'm breaking it's bulletproof glass. Ooh, grenade launcher. Here come the men. Anyway, screw those guys. Grenade launcher. I feel better already. They've seen us. <clears throat> oh, I didn't kill I didn't kill Oh, you're, you're a tough little guy. Yeah. Engaged. There we go. Tough little guy, is see. Yes, ma'am. I will take the elevator down right now. Hurry! Get to the door! Run! Ooh. I should be burnt to a crisp. Don't know why I'm not dead. Right, coming through, coming through. Ooh. All right. Ooh, wall safe. All right, got some money. Also, let's ju probably should check out my uh, stuff. Let's see. All right, so I already have credits and I already have resources, which is great. But that's also because, yeah, as you can see, I start at level four. Um, because I transferred to safe. And I'm pretty even with Paragon and Renegade. I'm pretty even with being good and evil. Which is fair. Make sure creative costs one squad point. Your engine needs... Ooh. Health plus 5% power, so we'll do that. Uh, overload's gonna be a big one. And we'll do... Combat drill. And we'll stop. Lock update. The cost of this project. Four billion credits so far. But nobody Ooh. seems to care that we've gone over budget. I don't know where the boss gets all his money. Maybe it's better not to know. I just wish he'd kick a little Jeez. more in my direction once in a while. So that's a that's how I feel working any job that I work. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm like, uh like especially when it's like, hey, we just made like uh we just made like a uh two hundred percent profit this uh last year. Oh yeah, that's great. Uh so what bonuses are we getting? Actually, you guys aren't getting bonuses. Uh, we actually have to lay off some of you. We didn't make enough money. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't matter. You're fired. Major organs are again functional, and there are signs of rudimentary neurological activity. In an effort to accelerate the process, we've moved from simple organic reconstruction of the subject to biosynthetic fusion. Initial results show promise. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're moving this way. Oh! Dude, look out! Look! Oh, shit! Guy, look out! Move! Oh, you're dead. I'm sorry. I can't save you. I'm sorry. I couldn't save you. I tried. I don't know. Uh, all of the above, maybe? I've got him. Oh, I don't know who you are, but I'll help you. Woo. What are you doing here? I thought you were still a work in progress. Are you with Miranda? Yeah, sorry. I forgot this is all new to you right now. I'm Jacob Taylor. I've been stationed here for hostiles detected. Damn it! Things must be worse than I thought if Miranda's got you running around. I'll fill you in, but we better get you to the shuttle first. What, what is going Ever on? Since I woke up, someone's been telling me where to go and what to do. I need. To I need to know what's happening right now. Fair enough. I'll give you the quick no version. No jokes. I need you to know what's happening were right now. And destroyed. You were killed, dead as dead can be, when they brought you here. Our scientists spent the last two years putting you back together. You've been comatose, 
or worse that whole time. Welcome back to your life. Two, two years. See, I said this earlier, guys. So we didn't. I, I was like, we have no idea how long we've been out for. So now we know. We've been, we've been, we've been dead, basically dead for two years. I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this. Yeah, I can imagine. The Alliance officially declared you killed in action. The whole galaxy thinks you're dead. And if we don't get to those shuttles, they'll be right. Were there any other survivors from the Normandy? I'll tell you what. You help me finish off these mechs, and I'll play 20 questions with you all day. We're low on thermal clips, but fair I'm a enough. biotic. Just give the order That's when you want enough. me to hit them with the good stuff. Uh, I want you to hit me out right now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, Botics are pretty... Think of Botic abilities as pretty much force powers from Star Wars. That's, that's basically what they are. Oh, hold on. Jacob, I need you to uh, look at Sky up. There we go. Okay. Ooh. I promised I'd answer your questions. What do you want to know? Uh, first, let's talk about my injuries. I mean, was I dead? Was I so comatose? Spent two years rebuilding me. How bad were my injuries? I'm no doctor, but it was bad. When I first saw you, you were nothing but meat and tubes. Anywhere else, they'd have put you in a coffin. But Project Lazarus was different. Ooh. Cutting edge technology. Cutting what do you edge. mean, cloning? Cybernetics? I don't know the details. You'd have to ask the scientists. But I'm pretty sure you're not a clone. They wanted to bring you back exactly as you were. You're still you. You just might have a few extra bits and pieces now. Can you tell me about the project? Were there other test subjects? Project Lazarus only had one subject. The whole point was to bring you back. Just you. Even that was a challenge. Two years. All the top scientists. The best technology money could buy. Do you know anything about this attack? Who's behind it? What they're after? Dan Fino. I was getting ready for some shut-eye, then BAM! Bunch of explosions. Next thing I know, every damn mech in the place starts shooting at us. I'm guessing it had to be an inside job. You'd need top security access to hack all the mechs. The last thing I remember is the Normandy blowing up. Did anyone else make it? Just about everybody survived. A few servicemen from the lower decks didn't get out. Navigator Presley was killed by an explosion. Oh, but everyone else, including Navigator the non-alliance crew, the Asari, Liara, and the Quarian, Ooh. they all made it out alive. That's good. What's your job here? Depends on who you ask. Technically, I'm Miranda's top lieutenant, but I'm just a soldier. I served five years in the Alliance before this. Now I'm in charge of the station's security. Usually a lot more dull than this. Normally I don't fire my gun unless it's target practice. When I first woke up, someone named Miranda was talking to me over the radio. I lost contact just before I ran into you. Miranda Lawson is the station's ranking officer. She led the Lazarus team. It was her job to bring you back to life, no matter what. Should have guessed she'd try to save you. She's not about to give up on you now. You said you lost contact. Could you tell what was happening? There was some gunfire and an explosion right before I lost her. She knows how to take care of herself. But I hope she's okay. All right, Jacob, that's uh, all the 20 questions I have. Uh, we should probably get out of here and figure out uh, uh, who's behind What's us. the quickest way to those shuttles? Depends where the mechs are thickest. It's probably best if we... Check, check. Anyone on this frequency? Anybody still alive out there? Hello? Wilson, this is Jacob. I'm here with Commander Shepard. Just took out a wave of mechs over in D-Wing. Shepard's alive? How the hell? Never mind, you need to get her out of there. Get to the service tunnels and head for the network control room. Roger that, Wilson. Stay on this frequency. Uh, we don't got time. Let's get, Let's out get out of here. You bet. We can get into the service tunnels through this door. Log update. The Lazarus Project is about to enter the final phase. It's taken nearly two years, but we did it. Commander Shepard is alive. This is the most amazing medical achievement in recorded history. Maybe now Miranda will finally show some appreciation for everything I've done. So, and I'm going to tell you guys now, I'm going to play this game how I would realistically make a choice. So I'm not going to be like...
there's no need to worry about me being a goody two shoes. I'm not gonna be a goody two shoes. I'm not gonna be a good two shoes, and I'm not gonna be a ruthless asshole for no reason. Oh, oh, hold on. Wilson, 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 we're coming. Wait, is there anything? Hold on. Physical reconstruction of subjects More audio complete, logs. but we still need to evaluate all mental and neurological functions. Our orders were clear. Make Commander Shepard who she was before the explosion. The same mind, the same morals, the same personality. If we alter her identity in any way, if she's somehow not the woman she used to be, the Lazarus Project will have failed. All right, come on, Wilson. Shepard, down here! Oh. Bastards got me in the leg! You were there the first time I regained consciousness. Yeah. I was. That was me. <laughs> How about we talk about this after we fix my leg? Should be some Metagel in the first aid station on the wall. Hopefully there's enough to get him up and moving again. Grab the Metagel from the first aid station on the wall. All right. All right. Hold our right bumper. What unit is it? Okay. Thanks, Shepard. <clears throat> Never thought you'd save my life. Guess that makes us even now, hmm? I thought maybe I could shut down the security mechs, but whoever did this fried the whole system. Completely irreversible. We didn't ask what you were doing. Why do you even have mm. security mech clearance? You were in the bio wing. Weren't you listening? I came here to try and fix this. Besides, I was shot. How do you explain that? Look, look, guys, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't You're trust any strangers to me. Let's get someplace safe and then we'll sort out whose fault it is. Yeah. Right, Shepard. We need to find Miranda. We can't leave her behind. Forget about Miranda. She was over in D Wing. The mechs were all over that sector. There's no way she survived. A bunch of mechs won't drop Miranda. She's alive. Then where is she? Why haven't we heard from her? There are only two possible explanations. She's either dead, or she's a traitor. Then why did she wake me up and warn me about the attack? Mm. Okay, maybe she's not a traitor. But that doesn't change the facts. We're here, she's not. We need to save ourselves. The shuttle bay is only a few... Oh, shit. We can overload the canister oh. back to the shuttles. Oh, overload. Uh, overload. That's it. Let's there we get go. out of here. I was like... Okay, it, it we all... took him down. Oh. But this is getting tense. Shepard, if I tell you who we work for, will you trust me? This really isn't the time, Jacob. We won't make it if she's expecting a shot in the back. If you want to piss off the boss, it's your ass, Jacob. The Lazarus Project. The program that rebuilt you. It's funded and controlled by Cerberus. Cerberus, um, Cerberus sounds familiar. Um, for people who've played the first one, Cerberus is a basically a black ops group that you hear uh, a black ops group for the Alliance, which is basically the humans, uh, military, navy, etc. Um, there's a there's a lot there's a lot of side quests in Mass Effect One where basically it's hinted at that they're responsible for a lot of heinous acts. So I definitely have heard of them. So we've heard of I think them. I ran into Cerberus a few times while I was investigating mm -hmm. Saren. Some kind of pro human splinter group, right? Well, that's what the Alliance wants people to believe. But there's more to it. The Alliance declared you dead. They gave up. Cerberus spent a fortune to bring you back. Look, I'd be suspicious too. But right now we have to work together. I thought you deserved to know what's what. Once we're off the station, I'll take you to the elusive man. He'll explain everything. I promise. Elusive man. Is he in charge of all this? Yeah. That's not his real name, of course. Nobody knows who he really is. It was a code name the Alliance used for him. Kind of stuck. I don't care what his name is. He just needs to answer my questions. 
All of them. They spent a lot of money and time bringing you back. Alright. Didn't mean to skip over the uh, dialogue. Oh, hold on. Did that do any? I guess I didn't do anything. I'm looking around for little goodies. Oh, oh geez. Gotta hurt. There we go. Doing great, guys. Good job, teammates. I love you guys. You are doing a fantastic job. We're gonna get the hell out of here. Oh, I didn't mean to. Oh. Grenade launcher. Okay, I... There we go. We're fine. This is fine. Oof. Jeez. I already... Did I go through this one? I think... Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, we did. Basi basically, we went through this fight. But yeah, I'm going to be playing this game how I want to play it, like the decisions I would honestly make. I'm, we're pretending that I've never played the Mass Effect series, so the choices I make will be based on choices I would make. Oh boy, the favorite, the, uh, the really weird minigames, which are very weird. Oh, we got plenty of time though. The timer is very slow. Boop. salvage I mean I guess all these dead people have a lot of money I mean I'm guessing because we're, we're certainly getting a lot of money from them come on through here we're almost at the Miranda but you are oh. it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up Ooh. oh shit oh my gosh dead what the hell no. are you doing My job. Wilson betrayed us all. You should have taken him alive. See what he knew. Too risky. I've put too much time and effort bringing you back to life to let you get killed now. You really think Wilson's capable of that? Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Well, he was a traitor, apparently. If you say so. What's our next step? We get on the shuttle and go. My boss wants to speak to you. You mean the elusive man? I know you work for Cerberus. Ah, Jacob. I should have known your conscience would get the better of you. Lying to the commander isn't the way to get her to join our cause. Well, since we're getting everything out in the open, is there anything else you want to ask before we go, Commander? There's a lot of questions Convenient I have that you here. show up as we're leaving. Where were you during the attack? Besides trying to save your life? Wilson figured out I was helping you when he sent an army of mechs to take me out. I got here as soon as I could. Probably a little too soon, if you ask Wilson. What about the rest of the people on the station? This is the evac area. If they're not here now, they're not coming. We can't leave without knowing for sure. We need to go back and look. Don't you get it? The only one worth saving is you. Everyone else is expendable. She's right. Oh. We all knew the risks when we signed up. Without you, there's no point to any of this. All right, so... Where are we going? Another Cerberus facility. The elusive man is waiting for you there. I'm not going to ask that. That just sounds stupid. If I don't come along, what do you mean? If I don't come along, they're going to force me. Uh, basically, right now, I don't really seem like I have a choice to do anything but follow. You're the Lazarus Project's director, aren't you? That's right. I put two years of my life into this project. Into you. What does Cerberus want from me? Maybe you should ask the elusive man when you meet him. He poured virtually unlimited resources into Lazarus. Obviously, he has some kind of plan for you. All right, I guess let's get out of I've here. I've had enough of this station to last a lifetime. 
Or two, in your case. Come on. That's a that's a big facility. Holy crap. That's where we were at. I Before really you meet with the don't like the men, scars on Shepard's face right now. We need to ask you right questions now. to evaluate your condition. Come on, Miranda. Really more like tests? So. Shepard took down those mechs without any trouble. That has to be good enough. It's been two years since the attack. The elusive man needs to know that Shepard's personality and memories are intact. Ask the questions. Two years? Did you say two years? I've been gone that long? Two years and twelve days. And you were on an operating table for most of it. The sooner we start, the sooner we can be done. Start with personal history. Okay. Records show you were a spacer kid, raised mostly on one ship or another. You enlisted and led troops during some heavy fighting, most notably on Torfin. Do you remember taking on some Batarian slavers? A lot of most of my squad died in that fighting. They call me the Butcher of Torfin. I wish there'd been another way. You got the job done. That's all that matters. Satisfied, Miranda? Almost. Let's try something more recent. Vermeer, where you destroyed Saren's cloning facility, you had to leave one of your squad behind to die in the blast. Lieutenant Caden Elenko was killed in action. It was your call. Why did you leave him behind? I left a friend to die that day, and I didn't do it casually. But I had to save as many people as I could. Caden gave his life for the rest of the team. Without him, I couldn't have stopped Saren. He died a hero. I understand, Commander. And I wasn't judging your decision. Everybody at Cerberus knows that cloning facility had to be destroyed. There are other tests we really should run. Come on, Miranda. Enough with the quizzes. The memories are there, and I can vouch for Shepard's combat skills personally. I suppose you're right. We'll have to hope the elusive man accepts our little field test as evidence enough. <laughs> The elusive man is waiting man. for you in the other room. Before I do that, let's change some armor around. Uh, oh, these actually affect. Oh, look at that recon. Okay, that looks cool. Okay, these look cool. For now, I'm leave that alone. Oh, I want to get in the hood. All right, really quick before I end this video, I think I'm going to end here. I know... Oh, that looks weird. All right, let's go with the gray one. Slightly gray one. Tent. Uh, maybe some... Maybe some... Uh, some bluish... Bluish gray stripes going on. Uh, leave the pattern alone. Pattern color. We'll leave that red. I don't know. Do I want to wear? I don't want to really want to wear a helmet, but I don't really look like I have a choice. Because the helmets give you the helmets look like they give you bonus stuff. So the N7 helmet gives me plus five percent health. The N7 breather helmet gives me plus five percent health, and then the recon hood, which covers my entire face. I don't like that it covers your whole face though, but it increases your weapon damage by ten. All right. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm just going to change the armor color. Oh, it looks really good. And I think for right now... Oh, there's... Oh, I didn't even see these guys before. Huh. Alright, guys. I think we're going to end here. But uh, before I end this video, I think we should take a picture. Because Miranda... Miranda, you're looking great. Miranda's looking pretty good. But, but you know, Jacob's not looking too bad either. He's a strong, looking like a strong, confident, uh, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, Jacob didn't mean to get my arm in your way. I, I mean, you know, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sore here, though. Maybe you could, uh, you know, help me out here. No? Jacob, Jacob doesn't seem like he wants to help me out here. That's that's fine. But you know, Miranda, maybe Miranda will do a little better. You know, Miranda, this is the beginning of a new life, and I'm gonna start things fresh. We're gonna take a picture, Miranda. Before we go, smile for the camera. Smile, 
I need her to smile for the camera. Before we go... No, we don't want to hide ourselves. Alright, Miranda. Hold on, you gotta get in the good, nice, good position. Hold on, let me... Alright, take a picture. And I think this is the perfect ending. The first picture of our new life is Commander Shepard. And once again, we're in over our heads. So I have no idea what's going to happen. But thank you so much, guys. Oops, sorry. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Uh, I probably should save, too. That probably would be a good thing. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Uh, I'm really having fun taking me back to my good childhood memories when I used to play the Mass Effect trilogy. Really having a lot of fun with this. And hopefully, and I plan on playing through the entire second game with all the side missions and three. But first, we got to get through two. And right now, I have no idea what's going to happen. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Lastly, I'd like to say, if you like what you see, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Like and... Ugh, I cannot speak today. Feel free to like and comment on this video as well as subscribe to my channel if you want some more amazing content like this. And with that being said... This has been your lovely commander, Fallen Wolf. Oh, and I'll see you guys next time, hopefully on the bridge of the Normandy. Take care, guys. Bye.